Well, welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. Yesterday, I discovered some wonderful things about Max Min Power. So I thought, I was out last night driving and got stuck in a traffic jam and had time to reflect on some of the things that I'd seen. And to be honest, it still didn't make sense. I still couldn't believe that a machine of this type would have a, a ramped down power as the speed decreased. Now, although I saw what I saw and demonstrated it to you, I think I saw what I saw for the wrong reasons. As an old grey, fat, ugly engineer, I ought to know better. One of the golden rules that was always drummed into me was, don't believe anything that anybody tells you, and only believe 50% of what you see with your own eyes. Because you can sometimes invent a reason why you're seeing something, and it's not the real reason. Well, I think yesterday I fell into that trap. So. What we're going to do today is to have a quick look at the same sort of things again, but we're going to use acrylic this time. Acrylic does not tell lies. I can find out exactly what's going on by examining the cut path in acrylic. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to do just a few quick tests and examine the results, and we shall fairly quickly find out, I think, that what I saw yesterday was completely wrong. And if that is the case, I owe you guys an apology. But hey, I never claim to be an expert. I'm still learning as well. And uh, you're seeing this learning in action. So what we've got here, we've got 65% max, 65% min power, and we're running at 100 millimeters a second. So the reason I've got the power up is so that I can get a nice deep trace into the acrylic that we should be able to examine. <laughs> The chances are we shan't be able to examine that very clearly because the edge of the acrylic is not very clear. So what I'm going to do is to manually chop round this so that we can get a nice flame polished edge that we can view the acrylic from the side. So I'm going to do this manually. I've set a nice slow speed on there. I'm going to hold the pulse button down and I'm going to drive manually. So I'm just pressing the arrow key and the pulse key at the same time. And now we'll come down and we should have a lovely clear window into our problem. Well let's just have a quick look underneath here and see what we can see. Wow. Well there's your corners, all those spikes and we can see, we can see just here how the start point is. There's no kick at the start point because it's running away immediately from the start point but as it slows down and gets to the end there where the speed is zero look, we've almost got a pierce and we've got a pierce at every corner where the speed slows right down. So that's equal max min power. We've got what I observed yesterday and set me off on this track of maybe that's what max min power is. If I change the minimum power, maybe it will slow down for the corners. Well, let's set that up again. And this time what we'll do, we'll set the power down to about 10%. So now we're going to do 65% max power, 10% minimum power. And this is where I thought I saw yesterday the machine acting in a very clever way. OK, let me just cut this out again. Well, there's our two results. I think you'll see there's no difference between them. So even though I've got one of them set at 65.10 and the other one set at 65.65, it's made absolutely no difference to the result. So what I witnessed yesterday was a figment of my imagination and for that I apologise if I've misled any of you guys. But what this has done, this has set me off on a new path. Up to now I've really done very little in the way of engraving or etching and I do believe that this Max Min comes into its own when we do engraving and etching. So I'm going to have to do a lot more research on that subject so that I can come back and let you know exactly what Max Min does. 